Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this episode will be part eight in our Python Pygame uh, tutorial series. And this may be the last episode. I actually haven't made up my mind yet or not um, because we're getting pretty close to a completed game. Uh, so if you've been following along, you know this, but if you're new to the channel, we have built this game from scratch where you're essentially an orange rectangle dodging the ball and uh, you have four directional control when you collide with the ball uh, you get game over um, you can restart it it tracks your previous uh, score as well as your all-time high score and um, so there's a lot of features in here that are pretty cool uh, we haven't really spent long making this aesthetically pleasing as you can probably tell um, but uh, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to... So in the last video, we made the ball increase in speed as your score got higher and higher. And today what we're going to do is we're going to create kind of um, the ability to have player power-ups. So we're going to create a uh, speed booster inside of this game. And um, we're going to make it an object that appears on the screen that you have to go and grab and once you grab it, it'll increase your speed by one. So the game gets more difficult as the ball increases in speed, but then the player can also now grab speed upgrades. So this is kind of a cool way to look at player modifiers. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, um, we're actually gonna create a few new variables right off the bat, um, because I'm picturing for the speed, um, for the speed boost object, just a little rectangle so a lot smaller than the player um, but for this we're gonna do something we're gonna create a boolean to check whether or not a speed boost available um, whether it's even uh, true or false so we're gonna check based on the score since we last grabbed a speed boost um, to see if it's time for another one so every like 10 or 15 points that you get one of these will appear on the screen so we're gonna start off saying it's false and then um, this initially since we want it to not be available uh, the coordinates for the rectangle when we created initially I want to be off the screen so my speed X and speed Y eventually will become the placement for the speed boost um, but when this thing first gets created I want it to be um, inaccessible so I'm gonna put it off the screen and I'm going to make a variable called last grabbed. I'm going to use this to track what the score was the last time we got a speed boost um, to check if it's time for another one or not yet. So these are a few variables that uh, I think we're going to need when we do this. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, kind of like we always do, uh, down in the main game loop, I'm going to create a new function called speed boost check and in here we're gonna take a look and see if it's time for a speed boost or not um, which means we gotta come back up where we've defined all of our game functions and let's create a new one called define speed boost and check we called it and actually this uh, it's it sounds kinda simple but there's gonna be a lot of globals that we wanna pull in so that we can just mess with everything we have to and I do a lot of my functions um, with pulling in globals from the outside world. You totally could write all of these functions by passing the values in um, and then returning whatever data it is you want to return. I do it this way. Um, they're both totally valid. That There's a thousand ways you could write all of this code. I mean, that's the cool thing about programming is um, you get to create a unique solution and decide what works for you. So I'm going to pull in speed boost available to check whether or not it's time. Um, the total score and the last time we grabbed one. And then well, uh, our x and y coordinates because if it is time for a speed boost we're going to use this function to overwrite the negative 100s. And then we are going to pull in player speed because that is what we are actually going to increase if there is a collision. <coughs> Okay, so in here, what we're going to say is if the score minus last grabbed is greater than, we'll, we'll say 10 to start, and there's not a speed boost available, speed boost available, 
So this is when we say it's time to create one. Uh, then what we want to do is make, so we're going to set speed boost available equal to true here. Um, so this should be fairly intuitive, but we're saying, okay, it's been more than 10 points since we even had a speed boost on screen for you to go after. So now it's time for the speed boost to be available. <clears throat> and then we're gonna change the X and Y coordinates. Um, and so this is our first exposure in this series to random, but this is a really useful tool in the game building universe. Uh, a little bit of random number generation. Um, and since rand int comes from a package called random, uh, you'll need to use Python's import and from random import rand int. We're using integer because we're doing coordinates and coordinates have to be uh, coordinates have to be integers. So I'm gonna make speed x and speed y both a rand int uh, between 0 and 580 pixels. And this should, so speed is a little bit maybe misleading of a thing to call them. I mean that this is going to be the X and Y coordinate of, um, the X and Y coordinate of our speed boost, but I didn't feel like typing out speed boost X and speed boost Y. Um, but so this is going to return, this is going to place a block, which I'm going to define as a 20 by 20 rectangle anywhere between the left edge and the right edge of the screen. And the reason I did 580 rather than 600 is it's gonna be 20 wide. So again, to avoid it sticking off the screen to the right, you wanna stop a little bit early. Um, so this is only gonna run once because the conditions for it to be true immediately make it not true by saying this bit equal to true. So then we can come in here and say, uh, let's see, we're gonna be checking for collision with the rectangle here but for that to make sense we probably want to go make the rectangle first um, yeah let's do that we'll come back to our speed boost check function um, but I want to actually create this down below so let's go into our function and down here where we're drawing things um, when we draw all the scores and objects onto the screen, I want a new thing that we only draw if speed boost is available, right? So that bit we just set inside of our function to say that, hey, it's time for a speed boost. If that bit's true, then we want to create a rectangle that I'll call speed boost. And that is going to be a pygame.draw.rect and um, let's put it on the screen and we'll make it we'll make it white for now just cuz um, and then we need to give it some coordinates and this is where our speed X and speed Y come into play and then uh, I want it to be 20 by 20 so that's length and width and you gotta spell speed correctly and then inside of that we want to say if the player collides with the rect. So this is the first time we're seeing Python has a built-in collide rect function where you check if an object collides with a, a given rectangle. And since we created the speed boost as another rectangle, Python's gonna handle the collision detection for us here. And if that's the case, then we get to say player speed add one, speed x is uh, gonna go back to its invisible off the screen position same with speed y we are going to at this point update the last grabbed to whatever the current score is and then we will set that speed boost available back to false so we're saying once you've collided um, you're picking up the object increase your speed and then send the guy back off screen to be invisible um, and this is kind of cool, but it's also something where it'll be more useful to understand what's going on if we actually display it. So I want to display speed, and we're going to put this in the top right of the screen. So we're going to say speed, and then um, because we start the speed at 3, just because it's a little painful to be all the way at 1 when the game starts, 
um, to display it I'm gonna do uh, player speed minus two so that way it, it doesn't look weird having the game start with with a speed of three and you're kind of like well how did I get here so that's why the player speed minus two and then we're gonna blit this onto the screen display speed and I'm gonna put it over on the right side so 450 should be good for that and we'll put it back up at the regular score height um, let's see so oh that's right so we also um, need to incorporate some of this into our game over logic because if you have um, a last grabbed value that's not zero um, you want to reset it back to zero so that your um, and then you also want to reset player speed so these are just things that um, you want to reset everything when you restart the game to go back to how it was um, when the game started so player speed and then we'll actually if it was on screen we'll shoot it off screen just to be safe and let's see Uh, let's uh, go ahead and run it and see what we got so I need to be at least good enough at my game to dodge until we get to 10 and hopefully we'll see a rectangle on screen and if I go and collide with it oh, up there in the top left let's see if I can get to it and yeah so we see there I collided with it I've got speed of 2 and hopefully when I restart the game my speed goes back to 1 yep so let's see if I can uh, make it a little bit longer and maybe we can get a higher speed and see the ball kind of increment in speed as well. Um, there we go, let's grab that. So I do feel a little faster, I'm just quite bad at this game that I've built. <laughs> um, sometimes you can design them but you can't win them. Oh boy. Okay, speed two. Oh my goodness. This is a... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully if you've been building along, um, you have, you're have testing the game yourself and you're doing a little bit better than I am. Um, it's, a, it's always a good sign when you build a, a challenging game, but it's not usually good when the person who makes it can't get uh, past a fairly low point. So um, kind of cool. You can see the uh, actual, it's like if you're watching along, the next speed boost does not appear until 10 after whenever you actually grabbed it because obviously the ball score um, increments while you're going and getting it and so if it took you 10 whole points to go and get the speed boost another one would be immediately available and it's a little cooler to make you um, have to wait so we wait 10 after you actually grab it to let your score go up and in that previous run through in particular um, you should have seen the ball got going pretty darn fast too, but as the player's speed also increases, you have a much better chance of dodging it. So like a key to designing a fair and fun and like replayable game is you don't need any crazy complex mechanics, particularly if you're building a game in Pygame. Um, you're, not, you're not developing complex 3D worlds and stuff. You want something that's challenging. Um, something that rewards players for increasing in skill and something that has a lot of replayability and even though you know you could spend all day improving the aesthetics of this and I may do another video after this purely on how to upgrade your game aesthetically um, but this is the basics of a replayable game it can be frustratingly difficult or you can get really really good and I mean if you get to the point where your speed is 15 20 you're flying around the screen and the ball is whipping everywhere like that's pretty fun to play so um, that really does it for the basics of building a game in Pi game I think there's a lot of cool stuff here if you're really strong in Python already it's a fun tool to kind of apply what you know about Python with a little integrated develop uh, development module um, that'll let you um, create games so if you have any questions about what you saw in this video this whole series or um, anything that you've seen on this channel that you have questions about or would like um, to see something in particular in the future drop a comment and let me know and if you found this useful or anything else useful just uh, I really appreciate a like and a subscribe it helps the channel out a lot and as always thanks for watching and good luck with your code thanks bye